Hi, and um, welcome to another long play video. Uh, it's, it's been a while. Uh, been up to lots of uh, lots of stuff as usual. Going to try to get some more videos done this week and, and in the future. Keep things going. Um, so, well, let's just dive straight into the action, shall we? Um, my quest to get to 2500 has been thwarted somewhat. Um, and I'm now playing someone who has very good rating player from spain 2072 and remember everyone's very underrated at this time limit uh in the experience i've had so far now i thought i'd play an opening which i've um rather than tigers modern which would be with g6 um my opponent's played e4 i've gone d6 he's gone d4 i thought due to popular demand i would play the black line with knight to f6 and if you check out um, some of my previous videos, I did one video on this opening where I tried to explain everything you need to know in order to play the black line. So go and, go and check that uh, tutorial out. It's very short. And if you like the tutorial, I've got a DVD on the opening, DVD, out through chess base. Um, and it's a very fun opening to play uh, on occasions. And it's an opening where I put broken it down into a couple of stages. Now, stage one is basically to get this e5 moving. But I don't like playing it in this position because it allows my opponent to take on e5 and then exchange queens off. I don't want the queens off the board. We want to keep the queens on the board, don't we? Yes, we do. So I always play the black line by first moving my knight to this square. And stage one of my setup, as I said, is to, after this, get a stake in the center with the move E5. So that is the move that I'm going to play next, just trying to grab some space in the center of the board. Um, now, other people have been asking me, where's the green screen gone? As you can see, well, it fell down, basically. Um, I had to remove it to do some other work. And I'm now going to order some green paint. I'm going to paint it behind me. So in future, I should at some point have proper green paint. Don't worry about the green screen. Green paint. A lovely wall painted green uh, in this house that I'm renting. So don't tell the landlord, otherwise I'll be kicked out. Okay, anyway, stage one. Let's get it in. Stage one is this E5 move. And this is stage one of the black line. Just trying to get some sort of space in the center of the board and now at least if my opponent takes on e5 i will take back with a pawn and generally in these positions well he has taken on e5 i, I don't think this is a move that should scare me uh, really because he's releasing the tension in the center okay maybe he's going for some kind of equality position but i'm black when you're playing black it was karpov who first said you should aim to get equality and then once you've got equality only after you've got this equality can you then aim for more out of the position so one thing you also have to watch out for in the black line is this square here so i'm certainly going to keep an eye out for that now um and i don't want to allow a knight coming to g5 and sometimes white can take on this square so he could, if I go h6, maybe take here and go knight takes e5. Don't really want to allow that. So I'm thinking I'm just going to move my bishop. So if he goes knight g5, I can castle. And if he takes, I'll just take back. Now, where is the best square for my bishop? Well, e7 is a very solid square. But, I mean, I could also try to be a little bit more active and place it somewhere like c5 here. That looks like a more active square or even even somewhere like b4 trying to inadvertently put some pressure on this pawn here i think i might do that let's put the bishop on b4 because this is much more active than putting my bishop on e7 and i'm getting ready to castle when f7 be well defended so i'll probably flick that in and in some cases i might consider taking here and taking on e4 so my opponent's stopping well he, he's stopping me taking on e4 straight away i don't even i'm not even going to look at getting involved with complications like this until i've got my king castled i, I don't want to do that 
but I guess then let's just castle let's just get the king castled and before anything in chess really comes alight you need to follow the principles so I'm just going to castle and now if a3 I'm certainly more inclined to take on c3 and go knight takes e4 because my king's safe so my opponent's aiming against that now a normal move that is a good positional move here and I'm going to play it quickly is c6 and this is one of the main ideas in the black line the pawn controls a very good central square um i don't want my opponent's pieces coming into that square really and also now maybe even my bishop can consider if it's attacked dropping back to c7 so i have two choices here i either take on c3 and then grab the pawn here which looks quite interesting but it gets quite simplified then let's say i take takes knight takes here maybe he goes bishop b4 um i could do that or i could just consider playing it very solid putting the bishop back on c7 first and i don't know i mean i'm not i'm not i'm not in the mood for doing much calculation so i'm just going to keep it solid and my bishop on c7 looks like a good square i know my pawn is blocking it in at the moment but my bishop is doing a good job then of defending this pawn and which means my knight on d7 can then move which it can't really move in the previous position because i'd lose a pawn and later on if i can try to do a typical plan like get a knight to f4 um and he has to take you know if my e pawn ever moves away then my bishop becomes a very good piece um but i suppose it has potential on c7 and it's doing a bit of a, a protecting job here but next stage of my position what am i doing next well i've really got to think how i'm going to get my knight and bishop on d7 and c8 in the game and understanding the middle game positions here because i played this a lot and this is what i say when you play any opening you really should stick to an opening and understand the plans in the middle game now understanding the middle game plans here I know the very normal idea is to try to get my knight to f8. Now, I think a lot of lower rated players might put it on b6 here. Now, I'm not saying that's a bad idea, but it's just really a one move threat. I, if I'm going to do that, I'd rather play b5 first. But all in all, my next move, queen e7, does quite a lot of things. First of all, again, I support the center. Number two, my rook can now move to d8 meaning my knight has the f8 square and this is i know the positional square the knight goes to in this line um and it's just a useful move i clear the back rank it does a number of roles here i think you know knight b6 could be okay if i can continue with bishop e6 and then trying to get my knight into c4 because he has played b4 potentially weakening that now that's a good move i feel because my opponent wants to stop my knight from moving because then he can put a bishop on this square now if i move my b pawn to uh this square to b6 he will go b5 i don't want to lose control of the d5 square at the moment if he goes b5 i can just keep my pawn on b7 defending c6 defending d5 so i don't want to move my b pawn to b6 maybe to b5 but I'm thinking of a couple of plans here. Either bishop b6 first. I've also got knight g4, but then his bishop comes to this square. I think I'm going to play a useful move. I say a useful move. I think this is a useful move, but have I blundered here, actually? Can he go now knight to this square? Have I allowed this knight to come in to a good, aggressive square? Maybe this is not what I should have been doing. I've just realized now you've always got to watch out for the knight coming in. I wanted to try and threaten knight g4 when my opponent couldn't go bishop to g5. So knight g4 would be a move I want to play. And this is generally a good move. But okay, my opponent hasn't gone knight to h4, which I'm relieved about. I, 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 I didn't want that knight jumping into one of these two squares. So, okay, first of all, I think I'm just going to go rook d8 now. Do I want it on d8 or do I want it on e8? um maybe it is time to to swap plans here um i think the rook on d8 makes more sense doesn't it put the rook on an open file and at least now 
I can continue if I want to by moving my knight and not fearing bishop to c5. Um, I'm wondering though if I should try to exchange off these bishops even, you know, just playing bishop to b6, getting rid of his bishop here. His bishop's a little bit annoying. Should I do that? Maybe I should do that. But if I'm going to do that, do I go b5 first? b5, I'm worried it might get hit by a4. But I don't know if I need to fear that too much. Maybe I should just play this. So I've got a couple of plans here. It's working out the right thing. I've got bishop b6, b5 first, and then bishop b6, or knight to f8. Now, knight to f8, as I said, is the positional idea because this knight wants to eventually come into d4 or f4. Now, I think I can go knight to f8. If bishop c5, my queen, I think, can just come back to e8 here. And that looks safe enough. I think I want to con continue by playing on the king side here. I I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna play these ideas on the queen side. I like playing on the king side, and my plan here is to keep with the traditional idea in this normal middle game black line position, which is to head the knight towards f4, either via g6 or sometimes via e6. e6 might be a good plan if I can get it into this other square, d4. And you can see the difference between our pawn structures here is that positionally speaking, I always think black is quite good in these positions, pawn structure wise, because I control this central square. On the mirror image of that, my opponent doesn't control this square with a pawn. So long term speaking, I may be able to get a knight into that square. Now, first of all, though, if he plays a normal move like rook to d1, I think I will either continue. Do I want to exchange light square bishops again throughout this kind of game, throughout this, this kind of position? You always have to work out which pieces you want to exchange. Now, I think bishop to e6 makes some sense because his bishop is more active than my bishop on c8. On the other hand, on some rare occasions, this bishop on c8 has good potential to start an attack against h3. But I think that's a little bit superficial. Um, I mean, this position is equal, I'd say. I don't think I can claim an advantage from this position. It's an equal position, but I'm just going to try to put my pieces on the squares where I know they should go. So I'm thinking positionally speaking, this positional game, uh, there's not any immediate tactics here. I should play bishop to e6, just trying to swap off bishops. So then maybe my move b5 is better. And I think especially after this move, bishop to e6 should be played because now I now I can at least, well, do I want to recapture with my rook because I dropped the pawn here? Well, I have to consider that if it occurs. If rook takes rook, rook takes rook, is he really going to grab this pawn? Then I can play b6, trying to trap his bishop. Then he can play a move like knight here. But then I've got pawn here. So maybe I can continue my rook. But is my rook actually really good on the d file? Because one thing that's going to happen, if he takes on this square, um, and I take with my rook, he's, he's going to just play maybe rook d1, and we're going to have all the rooks come off the board. But I'm sort of thinking, of course, I have to go uh, queen to this square now I'm sort of thinking maybe I want to keep a rook on a8 because it might give me a chance to play a5 and undermine him on that area of the board so that's that's another another way I could think here okay but I've got some decisions to make because my opponent has moved his pieces in and there's a little bit of pressure against my position now um rook takes I'm thinking now bishop takes and then well if he does go bishop takes I can move my rook back to a8 and take on a3. The problem with queen takes now, which I wanted to play, is he will go bishop takes f8, and then he will go bishop takes e6. And I'm just wondering then, I don't like doubling my pawns. I want to be able to take back on e6 with a piece. So I think I'm going to play the normal, I'm going to, I'm going to play the normal move here, rook takes. If he takes on f8 now, I can go king takes and at least, at least this keeps me the option of taking with the queen on e6. I suppose the question is, can he go bishop takes a7? Now again, I, I, I'm not too concerned. I, maybe he should play that, but I've got two ideas there. I either go b6, try and trap that piece, 
or I play rook to a8 and I just try to get my rook active on a3. So both of those moves look okay for me. I mean, again, this is a long-term plan. It looks like he's got the immediate pressure against me and he's now going for exchanges. And of course, I'm going to keep my plan of going king takes because I want to take care of my queen. Um, and that that's, that's an exchange. I don't know. I mean, later on, I think my bishop has a lot of potential. Um, his pawns are on dark squares, so I might be able to attack them. And my opponent's just trying to swap off everything here. Not playing with too much um, oomph behind his moves. Now, of course, like I say, swapping is probably absolutely fine here. Um, and I'm going to be playing bishop against his knight then. Um, I think, I, you know, simple is good. I'm not going to complicate. I'm going to go simple. He has to take with his knight now. And then I think it will be time to play b5, followed by trying to get my bishop onto this active diagonal. And if he ever tries to go knight e3 to this square, he leaves e4 on pre. So this move b5 looks like the right move to play because my one weakness, c5, can be very well covered by a bishop. You know, every poor move weakens a square, and this move does weaken c5. But he can't get a knight into that square easily. You know, if he could get a knight to d3 or b3, uh, I'd be less concerned about, you know, more concerned, should I say, about playing this. But he hasn't, you know, it's going to take him a couple of moves to get his knight around here. And I can always cover that with my bishop. And I think my bishop would be a good piece. So I'm quite happy the way this has gone. Sometimes when you're playing with the black pieces, you, you, you can't ask for too much out the opening. You can't expect to get a winning position. You have to play the positional uh, long play games. It depends if you how your opponent, you know, manoeuvres his pieces. Um, and that's what's occurring here. Now, continuing with plans. OK, now my opponent is certainly trying to get this knight in here now by moving his queen to the square. Right now, um, I think even exchanging queens could be very good because, like I say, my bishop later on in my eyes has is stronger than his knights because he has pawns on the dark squares so i think this simple move again i'm going to keep things very simple today cannot be a mistake when you play against your opponent's knights one thing to bear in mind this is very important is to try to control your opponent's knights with your pawns so um i'm going to con consider controlling if he tried to get a knight to f5 with g6, but he's playing a better idea. He's trying to get his knight here. Now, I've got a decision. If I go queen takes here, he goes knight takes maybe, knight takes e4, knight takes here. Could do this, but why should I? His other plan is to take and then maybe move a knight to this square. Um, that also looks good. Now, queen takes queen is the move I want to play because I want him to go pawn takes. I feel, but let's have a look. Queen takes queen, knight takes. And then knight takes e4, knight takes e5. And he's attacking this one here. I can, of course, play... Well, I can't play c5 because he's got knight here, check. So in that position, I've got bishop b6. Uh, but then his knight on d3 defends nicely. The other idea I can do is bring my king in, getting ready for the ending. And I'm now thinking this is what I should be doing. Let's just get the king to as active square as possible, getting ready for the ending. Um, I, I, I'm assuming my knight may be coming to d7 later on. I mean, with two ideas, to cover c5 or maybe later on to try to get it into one of these two weakened squares my opponent has. So my opponent's now decided, right, I'm going to keep the queens on the board, and I think that makes some sense. He, he wants to get his knight to d3, and we spoke about this being a good square for his knight. Now, you know, I can play this move knight d7. I, you know, it's something I don't really want to play. Um, and I, But then my bishop does get to this good square. Uh, bishop looks like it belongs on this square. Now, has he got any try? If he comes into f5, I've always got g6. Um, I think I'm just going to try and improve my bishop.
by placing it on this square here. That, that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, now c4, I can put my bishop hopefully onto the d4 square. Um, that's what I'm relying on against that one. I should have maybe paid a bit more attention to c4. Still a very equal position, maneuvering game, and my opponent maneuvering very well at this uh, moment in time. Bloody hell, it's hard to win rating points here. You can see these guys are only apparently 2,000. Uh, you know, they seem to either be cheating against me or playing very well, much above their rating. OK, so here he has played this. Now, I think I have to go bishop d4, don't I? Uh, I think this is the only move to be played because I don't want to take there because then his knight will become very strong and I don't want to allow him to go c5. So I've got to try and take control of this square. And at least now, if as, if he takes my bishop off, my queen gets a very good square in the centre of the board, controlling a, a lot of uh, a, a lot of the board here. Now, tactically, what else can he play? Well, if he goes pawn on, um, I can try to keep my queen on the d file, or I can try to sneak my queen in to b three, maybe like this. Uh, if he takes on b five, well, I have to take back. And I'm hoping I have calculated this right. I'm hoping that I'm always picking up the knight if he tries to grab this pawn. I'm quite happy in some ways that he took that one. Um, but, you know, I suppose his other plan is now to go knight here, take my bishop, and then get his knight to this square, which he's played. Okay, so position is getting critical. Now... I haven't found a good square for my knight so far. Um, now, is it time? I don't think it's doing anything on d7. My bishop is okay, because I can always take with a queen. It's time. It's certainly time to get my worst place piece, my knight, to a better square. I mean, here, I defend this. I defend the c5 square. And later on, like I mentioned, I might try to get my knight into this square. But of course... This position does still look um, very even uh, to my eyes. Um, I'm certainly always watching out for this idea. But again, like I said, use your pawns to control those knights. If his knight ever tries to come here, I think I just go g6 and, and I control his knight very well. So I'm not overly concerned about that. What other moves am I, what should I be playing here as well? Well, I can consider a5. Um, with ideas of picking up that pawn I can maybe consider I don't want to play a move such as f6 which is a good idea in some respects to defend e5 just to improve my position but then if f6 he does go knight to h4 and I'm probably just losing there positionally because I can no longer play g6 because he would take g6 so I've got to be careful moving my pawns um, I don't really want to go g5, positionally speaking, because then f5 is a hole. And if he ever gets a knight to g3, you know, I don't want to give away squares. So I think actually moving my pawns on the king side, if anything, could 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 actually weaken, weaken my position here. So I, I don't want to do that. My opponent's played the best move, I feel. He, he's trying to get his queen on the best possible square. And now... I've got a couple of ideas. Um, well, is he really going to come into c8? That'd be a little bit annoying. I can try to keep my bishop now by going bishop to b6. Um, and then if queen c3, well, I have to watch out for that, don't I? Um, don't really want to allow that. Now, the other idea is move my knight to b6. Um, and really trying to get it in there. Knight b6 is my first fault because imagine if my knight comes to that square. Very nice square. Uh, knight here is looking like my main idea, but he has got knight here, then here. Okay, knight here, knight to this square. Feels like I've made progress there. Can my king come across, try to exchange queens? Uh, knight here, knight here. Maybe then he's going to go knight c5. Um, so I've got to watch out for that tricky position. This for both of us, I have to say, uh, maneuvering is is certainly key. So bishop b6, queen c3. 
and then this pawn is 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 a nuisance um don't really want to move this one away do i play something like no i'm gonna go for this one Let, let's let's go for this one let's move my knight into at least a more active square the only reason i didn't want to play this is because um well i certainly don't think he should allow my knight into c4 but I can see a plan from my opponent of going knight d2 because by moving my knight here, I, ha I have lost a bit of control of c5. So, you know, I'm not worried about knight c5 now because my knight comes in and all my pieces, I think, are quite good then. But if he tries to first restrain, remember the idea restrain and push with that, then maybe he's, that would be good. OK, but he's done this move. Right. Now, I'm always want to take with a queen, but that does allow him in with a check. Uh, take him with a queen. He comes in with a check. Then I have queen back. A little bit passive. Queen to this square. And, well, I don't really want to take with a pawn, positionally speaking, here, do I? Because I think, positionally speaking, I want to keep my queen active. This check, uh, I'm going to have to think of a way to deal with this check. Now, if I move my king, if I move my king, then he takes here. Now, if I move my queen back, he has check here. This is actually a little bit annoying for me. He seems to be playing very, very well here, which obviously worries me because of the computer angle, of course. But I'm not going to accuse anyone without any, uh, <laughs> without any, uh, you know, evidence so okay so this is this is a bit annoying you know okay so maybe i I, sh I had to play the other way so uh king f6 i've let him in uh queen here i forgot he could take this pawn with check I, I admit i forgot that one king here the knight comes here do i have to go passive can't see any other way i have to maybe go passive now but this is certainly this is certainly going against me now so ah oh dear Looks like I'm, I, I could be in a little bit of trouble again here. So we'll have a look at the game afterwards and see um, where maybe I, I went um, a little bit wrong in this game because maybe I had to take with a pawn there. But even earlier in this, things were slipping. OK, so he wants to take this pawn. Clearly, everything is covered at the moment, but no more than covered. Now, f6, he will take there. And that is a very difficult ending for me. This could be, you know, not just difficult, but really bad for me, this position. Um, because he's just simply going to take this pawn. Now, if I go a5, well, he has some simple ideas there. A check. I'm sort of fighting for a draw now in this position. Do I check and go queen d2? And then he takes and this check doesn't work. Queen here, queen d7, go for an ending. Well, how do I deal with queen takes pawn? Just with the idea of going there next. I'm losing a pawn here. Not good. F6, just queen takes pawn. And then the ending is, is going to be lost to me. So this this is this has gone horribly wrong here. Um, which, of course... I'm a bit annoyed about because my position should have been absolutely fine. So I've got to struggle to find a way out of my predicament here. Queen here, queen takes here. I can't really move anything. This is the problem. And the endings look really, really, really horrible. Can I hold the endings? I don't think so because he has an outside pass pawn. Can I move my A pawn and let him take this one? Maybe this is the best chance. Something like a6 here i don't think i can lose my a pawn because then he can swap off all the pieces put his king on b3 and go a4 uh, i can't allow that to happen so here well if he goes knight takes I i'm hoping then i can at least grab a pawn here the simple idea i don't know why he hasn't played this quicker is knight takes knight and queen takes e5 this you know this would be played instantly i think by most players so i don't know why he, he he's not consider why he's not playing that one straight away i can see he's got a little bit of uh this you you have disconnected 
uh, and what do I mean you have disconnected? Who's disconnected? Have I disconnected? Has my opponent disconnected? Who's disconnected? Well, okay, so he's taking this pawn. And I now see he has a, a trick. If I take on e4, he has queen takes d7 and knight c5 check. So this is very annoying. Now, how is this ending if I just go here? I've, I'm going to have to try to get into some ending. This might not be so terrible because his knight is out of the game and he's moving quicker now. Right. So queen b6. Can I play this? Takes, knight takes, knight c7 is, is, is really bad. Queen d4. I don't like it. His knight is coming back here against most other moves. Um, can I try to get my, do I check? Okay, let's, let's, let's aim. I think I'm going to have to aim for a perpetual here by giving him a check and coming to D2, trying this plan of gaining some kind of perpetual in this position. Um, if he goes, if he ever tries to exchange Queens, luckily my King is very active for the ending. This is the kind of thing I've been aiming for. Uh, you know, an active king in the ending. Like if he, you know, I can take the queen off, go king d6. Maybe I'm even doing well there because his knight is stranded. So knight to c5, I probably have to take the draw with queen check and queen check here. I, I don't think I can play for a win in that position. Certainly not because uh, um, this pin on my knight is, is bad. Now, one thing I have done, my position was starting to go wrong. And I've gone for active defense. You know, the best way to defend in chess is active defense. Try not to defend passively if you can. Always aim for active defense. I'd love to see him go king g3 here. Of course, he's played for a win, which he should be doing by moving his his uh, h-pawn, giving himself this square. Now, check king here. I think we're going to go for that, aren't we? Because at least then... It gives me some dream of even playing for a win. So let, let's go for this. If oh, what he's got? Oh, he's just got. Oh, he's got this move. I forget, am I missing? Th I'm missing loads of moves in my in my play. He's just got G3. I forgot again that uh, this just covers everything. Okay. Um, so I'm going to sneak my queen here, and again, not not the most accurate check that one. Uh, at least now, if he moves his knight, I can take on F2. But he might just have some clever moves with his king, like king g1. And then if I check him, he goes king g2. And he's holding off like this. But, uh, I mean, am I actually taking on a3? Am I taking on a3? Well, given, you know, if I can get away with taking that one, pinning his knight, I certainly will. So I'm certainly going to take that pawn if I get a chance. Um, I've just realized he has this move knight b8. And that is very frustrating knight b8 oh that could be that could be the killer actually yes it uh, hasn't worked well this one lost this game unfortunately um and i don't think there's any i missed i missed knight b8 there i was only only looking at the knight coming to c5 so we'll come back we'll try we'll play on the position a little bit i'll have a look at this afterwards um i'll try to um put it on the computer even if i can work out how to do that i should have worked this out a long time ago looks like i've had a couple of bad games recently this longer time limit and it looks like my rating is going to drop below uh what it should be well i say what it should be maybe not what it should be and my opponent now just playing some sensible moves to tighten the knot a bit computer like that move because he could have just swapped off everything and won the position. I don't know why he's doing that first. Uh, dare I dare I say it? Uh, now queen check. Uh, it's horrible. This I'll play. I'll play on a little bit, like I say. But I, I think I think this is you know unless my opponent blunders, there's there's no way out here. I mean, a simple a human would now a good human here would take everything on d7, and then move the king to b3. And then go a4 and this is just a very easy way to win the ending i think most humans would see this you take everything off here you slowly there's no way my king can ever come forwards so you slowly move your king to b3 because when your king is on b3 in the king and pawn ending 
you can play the move a4 and a4 will create a pass pawn on that side of the board and it will win the game and it's a very simple end game uh, te technique that so that's the way that's the way wish i was white here i i would play i'll just swap everything off but my opponent's playing in a in a more tactical manner and he's playing for for mate which also has to be said ha has has its uh, benefits now if i go here queen here i can go maybe king here it's sort of living on the edge but my position's so dodgy anyway i probably have to try something like this queen d8 he, he's trying to come into this square here you know but i'm hoping i might have king to d6 to 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 work against that um so we we will see queen to d8 king to d6 still still just fighting in that position um if it's my move what am i playing here well i, I think i need to start attacking the pawns i mean maybe i i can even grab the pawn on e4 uh so so i don't think i've got any choice here i mean this uh, i see his idea he's going to put his knight on b8 very very uh or how do you say it tactical way to get out of his position here but i don't see any way i can stop this now this looks like it will be losing and uh well i'm a bit annoyed with this i i don't know i dare dare i dare i mean every time i lose i, I, I can't say cheat but i've just literally been out tactic in sort of this this sort of uh quiet position it's one of those ones where i could have actually i probably should have spent a little bit more time but some of my natural moves weren't working and i think now there's no no way out this i just realized king here he comes back with the knight and then there's nothing to do about stopping this king back to e6 then i suppose he has queen e6 check and he takes here and queen e7 mate is unavoidable here unless my only other hope i can see is moving my king to this square and somehow uh trying to you know at least run away here uh but knight b8 is surely his idea at the right time so let's have a look okay we go here first just about hanging on by the skin of my teeth still my knight has been a bad piece throughout this game um and it's been struggling but he, he still hasn't quite won this one yet still hasn't quite won this one now i think things i'll do in the future as well i mean i i want to you know play a, a variant of stuff i mean i'm going to play some crazy speed chess in my next video so if you've been missing the speed chess do do expect that one uh to come back on on the wednesday i'll, I'll get up a video try to get my rating back to 2500 my chess as you can see hasn't been too too impressive recently but um okay he's given a check and now he just wants to go here and mate me which i don't think i've got any way to stop we'll, we'll let we'll let him do this knight e7 threatening queen mate and that's that so okay um now i should be able to work out how to put this on the computer i'm quite intrigued to see uh what the computer uh finds you know finds for for both of us my position was certainly certainly fine um but i misplayed it somewhere in the middle game so i i will put it on the computer this time if i can if i can do that which i know there is a way how is the way to do it i've got to save the pgn and then uh put it on well maybe next time i can go through it verbally or maybe leave it to you guys to have a look and again i don't know why it's taking so long as this move knight to e7 is just very obvious um and well he hasn't played it um which surprises me he he's, he's trying to find another way to do it so maybe he got a bit worried about uh being classified as a cheat there so he had to play a second best move i don't know i'm just annoyed i'm losing you can tell that uh this position of course is also uh pretty pretty bloody bad um so is there any way we can uh do this queen takes pawn queen takes knight nope uh queen to f3 is that my best chance going for some perpetual queen to c6 knight here check here okay queen here 
check well let's try this is my the only chance i can see um in order to uh, try and get some perpetual against f2 here now if queen g6 check he could have gone knight e7 last move and win straight away so maybe he, he has made this error and uh, you know after playing an excellent game okay so is this a draw i haven't worked it out it didn't seem like i had much of a choice it looked like i had to go for the perpetual here and um you know there's no other options but king h3 check king h4 check king g4 let's try it. no other options i've got to try to get the perpetual in maybe this one is the correct way to play uh and then i have what do i have there well i have the check here he can try to come into this square at least i grab a couple of pawns there it's not so not so clear time's getting a little bit low so can still hustle a little bit here actually you know king here queen e2 must be the right check well the only check uh other moves no any stale matrix of course not so i've got to play this check and now if here well i can go to h2 if here i go to f1 so he has to come forwards now which of course should be winning but after check here i am going to get quite a lot of pawns here so this is not all over actually because i've won two pawns for my piece and as far as i see i'm winning this pawn here did i have a better move than doing that check i don't think so because he was coming in anyway i might as well take as many pawns as i can now this one means that his king has to keep guarding his queen and then i can take on e4 or something like that so uh and what do i have well i have two pawns for the piece his time's getting a little bit low so it's certainly better than it was uh i don't want to take g3 because it allows his queen here right, let's take a nice juicy central pawn let's get rid of the central pawn here um and of course this is still worse for me king f8 actually threatens checkmate here uh, i'm still struggling i still may be mated but there is at least a glimmer of hope in in, in this uh well i have to go queen g6 is there a glimmer of hope here after is he going to eventually play this good move knight to e7 which was very surprising he didn't do it earlier i think knight e7 could be a killer uh again or well, he's gone queen here and he's threatening this mate now oh oh that's a nasty one that's a very nasty one um now if i move my queen i have to go h5 again i, I think i'm playing only moves to try and survive but i mean the thing is i mean worth remembering the combination of knight and queen is a combination that you know you, you you have to always respect it's a very deadly combination in a number of situations i think that's what's going to happen here with a queen check coming in so takes here um well he has a lot of ideas check king here knight mate if queen here i think this is going to be mate guys looks like he's got me um defended the best i could queen g4 is that my best chance well we'll, we'll give it a go i had to stop queen check and knight here mate but now he's got queen check king here and then queen h8 check and that's also mate as well king g5 queen takes here check i had to try taking the pawn but that was that was losing in another variation as well okay i'm not going to bother analyzing this one tomorrow will be more blitz then i'll come back and try and play a longer time limit uh, at a later date but we'll let my opponent mate me in, in this situation uh get him down and well we can no, i'm not gonna let him mate me i'm not gonna give him the satisfaction now before i do well i'll resign anyway well played sir let's just have a look who my opponent is and i'm under 2000 now really frustrating so okay so here he is and you can see oh dear i mean looking at his looking at his uh looking at his grades so frustrating looking at his grades let me just screen capture that 
very suspicious. Let's have a look. This is why I get so pissed off. Look at that. Look at his. That his tactics are 1300. His blitz is only 1100. And his bullet is 1200. So how did he play such a bloody good game then? Well, at least one thing. I mean, that for me indicates maybe I'm just a bloody bad loser. <laughs> well, I am. It isn't everyone. Um, that, okay, well, you know, who knows? Well, someone, I'm sure, can check his moves with a computer. The funny thing was, though, when he had these obvious moves, the thing that I, you know, made me suspicious, he played some brilliant ideas. But when he had obvious moves, let's say with... You know, any, any, any decent player here. I mean, come on, guys. Who wouldn't play knight to e7? I mean, is what was that even the best moves? I've got queen. Yeah, right, that's the best moves, just winning. Maybe he was playing second best moves at very clever moments. Where's my cheat alarm? I'm not happy. I'm accusing him of cheating, but I might be wrong. You know, I don't know. That I'm just frustrated for losing that one. Um, right, but um, going back, uh, looking at the moves earlier on. I think my position was, I mean, I played very normal. Uh, my position looked absolutely fine. I did all these normal ideas. I certainly shouldn't be worse around here. Um, now, where did I go wrong? So I should locate my mistakes. It's a queen to d3. Uh, and this is probably all right. Should I just go for the ending? Maybe I should just take off the queen and simplify. Because you can see I allowed this queen and knight to mess about. And coordination and queen and knight's very dangerous. I think I should just play here and go a little bit passive for one move. This must be the way to play. Silly of me not to do this. And now I can go f6, secure this, and get my knight here. I can't be worse. Maybe it's just my bad play there. Um, right, but we'll try playing another long play game. I'll, I'll keep this up. Um, I think I'm going to have to be a bit more careful who I play in future. So I will certainly aim to play you guys and um i play people that i know when i play people that i know at least uh, i feel a bit more confident they're not using a computer even if my opponent's not there i'm getting really paranoid now about my opponent using a computer which is annoying me uh so i think in future to keep these long play games going i'll play people i know um but lots more to come at least i'm still showing you some ideas there at least even if i did lose hopefully it still helps you because the opening was absolutely fine and i showed you how to play against this particular setup i mean i'm not worse i've got an equal position i just got outplayed later on in the game um so a bit frustrating there but thanks for watching anyway i'll be back with some more positive stuff uh tomorrow and very shortly uh cheers for that crazy blitz has got to be coming up soon bye for now